secret audio you got about Stephen Hawking. I just can't believe that you guys actually got access to that. <laughs> Can you believe that that Stephen Hawking like somehow gave Caleb that that uh, voicemail? You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on the Cigar Guys podcast. Today, we have special guests joining us for the podcast. But first things first, I wanted to talk about our sponsor for this episode, which is 10th Mountain Whiskey and Spirits. We're drinking their rye today, and we did a full episode on this, so definitely go check out that as well. But basically, this is a company out of Colorado, Vail, Colorado, and a uh, relatively new company, but I'll tell you what, for only having their uh, their barrels, they aged the whiskey for two years, and it's actually phenomenal for a two-year you know, aged whiskey. I think Jared and I prefer something a little with a little more age, but they, uh, they blew me out of the water with this one, actually. I'm pretty surprised, so definitely go check them out. Okay, guys, so today we have a special guest here on the podcast, a fellow cigar podcast. You guys might have heard of them before. Let me bring in here Down to Herf podcast. We've got Geo, Caleb, and Jerry joining us. How you guys doing? What's up, fellas? How we doing? What's Pretty good. Going on, guys? Doing good, good man. To be here. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. So we're going to talk a little bit about you guys. So introduce yourselves. Tell us what you do outside of smoking cigars and doing the podcast. I think Jerry, you should take it away. You're the leader. Started I'm the leader. leader. Yeah. Jeez, hey, stop. listen, you're the fellows, fellows, fellows. <laughs> All right. So I'm Jerry, uh, Down to Earth Podcast. Uh, we're a small little podcast that talk about cigars and whiskey out of Buffalo, New York. Uh, when we're not smoking cigars and whiskey, uh, Gio and I work for local law enforcement here in Buffalo. Uh, so, you know, just a couple of pigs in Buffalo. <laughs> I mean, that pretty much sums up, we have, that pretty much sums up the extracurricular okay. activities. Yeah, shout out to a Buffalo and Buffalo Bills because I think Gabe Davis went to the same high school, similar high school, right here in Sanford, which is like five minutes from where we are. Um, and he, he comes and smokes in our local shops around here. So, small world. He is a cigar guy. I've actually heard this. So Yeah, he know. is. He just, got, he just got ruled out. Yeah, he needs to. Would have liked him this week for Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's awesome, though. So, I mean, uh, Jerry... I feel like you have a little Midwestern accent. Correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds like you're from the Midwest, or did you grow up in Buffalo? Dude, I'm from Buffalo, New York. Uh, okay. Actually, a lot of people think I'm from Canada. <laughs> like oh. like that, uh, North Dakota, eh? Like yeah. <laughs> I, maybe a little northern. Yeah. I don't know. But no, nah, man, I'm, I'm from Buffalo. I mean, I guess that's pretty much Canada. Or maybe Canada considers itself from Buffalo. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's pretty they close. Are like our, they're like our sister country. Yeah, exactly. You know? gotta look out for yeah all right so that hockey player voice <laughs> so you said uh uh jerry and caleb you guys are the law enforcement correct no, 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 no. Me, and, me and jerry Gio. okay so what do you do caleb i just work from home i have a very boring uh job in the health insurance business uh work from home five days a week uh this is my escape just uh, this i'm the wild card of the group no that sounds good to me i mean uh jerry and i both work from home as well so uh, we're often, you know, together, whether it's working on this stuff or, you know, our other jobs, that's, that's what we're doing. Yeah. ours is a little different. We're, we're discussing podcast stuff in the midst of a patrol fair. Like, hey, what should we smoke? <laughs> we got to go this freaking domestic. And speaking yeah. of, uh, so what's everyone smoking today and drinking? Um, I'm going with the Tatawahe monster. I got the face this year's release. Oh and, yeah. Um, drinking few rye whiskey. Very nice. I had that cigar, I think last month. I really enjoyed it. The Mexican San Andreas on it's really good. So, yeah, definitely yeah. good wrapper. Uh, yeah, I I figured this uh was fitting. Uh, obviously, I saw you guys were just on with our our boys the other day over at Cigar Hustler. 
So I decided to pull out the SBC 22. I don't know if you guys have had it, but that is uh, surrounded by champions. So I figured, what better, what better way? You know, we're mm -hmm. all a bunch of champions here, so let's just uh, <laughs> let's just fucking rip it. Absolutely, it is a great cigar, and I actually have another one in my humidor, uh, and I'm really trying to save it. But every time I open that humidor, I look at it, and that's one of the cigars I'm like, ah, I should smoke that one, but I'm gonna save it for sure. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Cigar Hustlers too. I mean, great guys. Uh, great podcast with them as well. But yeah, those listening, definitely check out, you know, the brother podcast, Cigar Hustlers. They got a great podcast over there. Those are our boys, man. Mike and Mike, Phil, all, all the people over there. We love them guys. So fortunate enough to be a part of them. Yeah. I got uh, the Wise Man Maduro Firecracker. So mm. that collab they did with uh, United. Oh, nice. Foundation. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one too. A little shorty, but it packs a punch. i uh, Dog walkers are the best win in my line of work. So, so what uh, got you guys, you know, to start a podcast? Uh, what was the defining moment? And you guys reading basically like, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Here's what we're gonna do. Um, you know, what kind of led you to start? Well, I mean, me and Jer were uh, in this. What is now our studio was originally a garage that is kind of like bare bones to the studs. We're freezing cold during covid after a shift smoking cigars and having it and you know and a drunken support we just said hey let's start a podcast and then it kind of went from there that's pretty much the short version of it <laughs> yeah i would say that's pretty much spot on uh it started shivering in here like geo said and you know then you get i'm sure you guys have had them those awesome drunk conversations where you know you come up with your best work Exactly, uh, and that that was yeah, that yeah. was uh, the defining moment of the podcast. I think <laughs> that brought Caleb on, like you said, the wild card of the group. Is that where the uh, uh, term "herf" came from? Or <laughs> no, we were playing around with names and we couldn't figure it out. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, you guys are in the cigar industry. You guys know what a herf is, right? But it's a, it's a play on down to earth. Yeah, that, and then I was gonna say too, uh, explain to the viewers, you know, for those who may not know, what herf actually means in the cigar industry. So, I mean, a herf is just simple as this uh mm -hmm. it's a couple of guys or girls getting together having some good conversations smoking good premium cigars exactly perfect um so yeah premium I mean, cigars not that hand rolled flavor exactly no no, no 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 premium no. only <laughs> premium cigars, yeah. <laughs> but yeah i mean we started yeah, in the garage back in line it's okay <laughs> yeah, well yeah. that's what i grew up on back in the day in high school little backwoods yeah <laughs> we cut them up in a Cut them up and roll blunts back in the day when I was on, on exactly. the devil's lettuce. <laughs> we no, we started in the garage too. Except uh, being in Florida, uh, we started in January, so it was very nice and like cool. So our issue was not getting too cold, but it was getting too hot. So we had to get the AC involved and all that stuff. But I mean, it, most people kind of like you guys, you can't really tell it's a garage at all. It looks like you know you're just in some really nice studio. Yeah, appreciate that, man. He what? takes pride in his work. Where are you guys recording right now? Because that looks like a nice setup spot. Yeah, we're in the garage here in Lake Mary, Florida. So, <laughs> well, if, if, if you watch their podcast, they're on the left side of the table. If you're watching from the normal angle, I was going to say, yeah, I, I can't. You're I didn't know it was at a though. Right? Yeah, we have uh, the other Albanians there, uh, or I guess the only Albanians technically. There are uh, ones in Georgia right now, and then ones handling uh, some other business for uh, base of cigars. So we got. I would say the two best guys on the podcast for you. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. We appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, okay. We, we assembled the whole crew. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. I, I know that, uh, you know, geo said it was very hard to get everyone together. And as you can see, there's only two of us today. So that's what happened to us on our end. <laughs> Scheduling is always a pain. It is. Yeah. I feel like that's the hardest part of doing a podcast. I, I actually, at some point, I want to touch on running a podcast yes. uh, with you guys. Like, because obviously, we, we deal with things that a lot of people don't get to see, like the behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's very underappreciated. So, actually, one of our questions, we'll go ahead and go to that one, is tell us some behind the scenes stuff, whether it's issues or whether it's just, you know, just how it is, something that the, the viewers might not know about when it takes to run a podcast. Dude, we got. I, I know this sounds crazy, but this shit used to. This used to take like an hour to set this stuff up. I mean, we got this. This is down to like ten minutes now. Mm -hmm. We get everything up, whether it's remote episodes. But I mean, a lot. Of, I I feel like a lot of listeners probably don't understand like doing even like this, uh, collaborating, right? Uh, just 
we're in two different spots in the country. Uh, we're having a conversation. Uh, this isn't easy to do. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, things that can go wrong mm. uh, audio wise. I mean, like even the beginning here, people don't know that we had an uh, echo issue before, you know, but we got to troubleshoot that. So, I mean, those are things that I think a lot of listeners don't understand. You know, they just see the finished product. So, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. I mean, Not like us too, like when we were starting out, kind of like you guys, it'd take 30 minutes to an hour to get set up because we just weren't used to it. Now it's sit down, plug everything in and go. But yeah, and then for I know you guys do more um, like video podcasts like this from people across the country. Uh, we don't do very many. So every time we sit down to do it, we're like, okay, we got to meet an hour early to set this up because I forgot how we did it last time, which was three months ago. So that's another issue for us on our end. But We've had that issue before with uh, some people just not linking up the audio or video. And it, uh, we've only missed one interview, but you know, it happens. That's show yeah. business, right? Yeah, exactly. And I like doing uh, other podcasts like you guys too, because you have the setup down already, and you guys could troubleshoot a lot easier. You know what might be wrong, and you know how to get everything fixed really quickly. So, like when we did an episode with Cigar Prop, he was already set up, ready to go. Just because you know you've already you already know how that goes, and most people just connect their AirPods or set up their phone or whatever. And if there's any troubling, if there's any troubleshoot issues, it's like you know. You got to kind of guide them through on how to do it. 100%. Uh, I feel like it's not... Again, this is another thing we could touch on. Uh, people I probably believe that it's as simple as putting in an Apple AirPod and an iPhone and just <laughs> FaceTiming. Uh, on our end, I mean, you guys are using a soundboard. You guys are using uh, actual dynamic microphones. Uh, you're setting up lighting. You guys are doing things that, that you know, any guest usually doesn't do. Mm -hmm, they're sitting right. in their backyard smoking a cigar. They they click a link and then they're there. Exactly. Yeah. But, but we could have did an Apple AirPod thing right now, you know. But I wanted to make sure we had our lighting. We're using our actual microphone. So I actually on the way home from work figured out how to do this in my head, and I said, "All right, this is how we're going to do it. This makes the most sense." So that that kind of comes down with doing it over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Exactly. And the, the remote stuff, people just think it's a Zoom room, like yeah, uploading all that stuff. That is so like mm -hmm. sometimes the people in our industry are in other countries. Like we had a guest that was in Nicaragua, and awesome conversation and all that. But because the internet isn't the you know mm -hmm. high speed we're used to here, it took like three days to upload. So like mm -hmm. he's crunch time because he does all the editing. So. I'm like, oh man, I really hope this uploads. He's like, we're just gonna fuck it up before we get to our demo. Yeah, he's going nuts. Like, and I just, uh, I just add in the other hard part that maybe behind the scenes that you guys probably deal with too is just sometimes just uh, I do a lot of writing and I got the laptop all the time. Sometimes just uh, planning out a show besides like the usual segments that we do, like uh, our Patrol Gone Wild and our news edition. But sometimes just getting a a main meat topic is, you know. Not everyone thinks about it. Some people just think we come in here and talk the shit, but like we, we plan it out. We're always texting in our group message like almost every day. So it's like uh, there's a lot of planning and writing that goes on just so we have topics and just continue a conversation because like stale airtime is bad and you don't want mm -hmm. that. Right. Exactly. And especially if you do, you know, like you guys, a podcast every week, you got to make sure you keep coming up with new topics. And that's a hard part too because the part. there's One only the so much part. you could talk about when it comes to cigars, really. Oh yeah. my god! Like, this is a problem like that you know you run into, especially in this industry. Because like, yes, we can talk. We all love cigars, and like for the you know me and you can talk about a you know a blend or a binder or a filler or something on why we like it. But the general person, like, if you're not that hardcore into it, mm -hmm. hard to keep and it can get dry. And you're right. Like, oh god. Because yeah, the average <laughs> consumer, it might just sound like the same thing over and over again. These guys sit down, they smoke a cigar, and they talk about it. So, yeah, you definitely got to think of ways to keep the audience engaged, bring in some new topics. I mean, you guys like to bring in the conspiracy theories and the politics, which I really appreciate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's this guy right here. This guy is <laughs> QAnon Caleb. That's my, uh, that's my favorite part. And that's how, like, Jerry and Gio had the drunk conversation. Yeah, we should start a, a podcast. But me, I've always been into listening to podcasts like Joe Rogan, anything mm -hmm. politics. And I'd always say to Jerry, man, maybe... I should start a podcast and just go on about politics. And Jerry's like, yeah, you know what? I can talk about that shit too. And then it just turned into like Geo had this idea. They brought me in. And I was like, yeah, let's just do it. And then 
eventually jerry's like all right it costs this much buy this we're buying the top of the line shit this is how we're doing it we're gonna sound good and uh we're gonna make sure we just we're gonna do this we said we're gonna do it let's just not like put it off we're gonna do it and we're gonna start it right away do you guys in your group have a guy who jumps the gun on everything and is like all right i bought all the shit this is how now you guys all have to venmo me and it's like very easy you just you simplify it a little bit for everybody Kind of. Yeah, you're looking at him, actually. <laughs> I, I get that, brother. I get that. So, like, I got to simplify things. And, and I simplify things by just, I just buy it. And right. then I'm like, all right, here, here's what we got now. You get this. You get this. You get this. We divvy it up. Done. Yeah, the way, done. the way it worked for us usually was, I mean, so it is my garage. So I put up most of the money just because, like, you know, the stuff is going to stay here. And then, like, if we need something in the future... You know, Zach would probably pitch in and get the next thing, or Jared would pitch in and get the next thing. So it's kind of like I put up all the initial stuff, and then next time we were like, "Oh shoot, we need these cords, we need like new cameras or new whatever." The next person would come out and say, "Okay, I got that one," and then you know the next person would get the next round. So it kind of works out that way. Um, and so, but, well, so you know, if you, if you look like at our, I'm like, "You sure headphones this way?" You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So if you look at our very first podcast, we actually only had one camera. And we didn't have all the stuff you see behind us now. So we slowly, as Alex was talking about, like progressively upgrade everything over time. You know? Yeah. Now I feel that. So we didn't have cameras. <laughs> like if you go watch our first video episode, because our first episode was only audio. Mm. Our first Three video, episodes, I think, were yeah. only audio. Nice. Once we went to video, like at first we were doing like a program where we were filming on our iPhones. And we're, there were four camera angles going at all Horrible. time. Then we just gradually started uplo- or upgrading here. Yeah, we got really complicated in the beginning because we were like, okay, we know we want different camera angles, all the mics and everything like that. So the setup was getting really complicated. We had nice cameras and stuff. And then now we're just like the computer and two iPhone cameras that are connected to the computer. We have the mics and stuff, obviously. Yeah. But it was like this whole time we could have just used the iPhone and it looks way better than the camera. They shoot in 4K. Exactly. But how about this, though? Only Alex would probably know this the gigabytes on those files are ridiculous. Yeah, so Jared and I were reviewing that actually. Um, our files used to be like 15 gigabytes for an episode. And uh, I looked into it, I did a little bit of, you know, finicking around and now it's down to like between five and 10. So I got it down a little bit, but still, I mean, that takes a while to yeah. upload, download, then upload. And then sometimes we're sharing between the drives and stuff. Like Jared and I, you know, I will record this episode. He'll upload it to the drive. Then I got to download it and edit it on my end. So it's a, it's a whole process for sure. I get that, man. I get that. Another thing, your uh, your garage will never be done. Just so you know, yeah. oh, it's no. a forever project. <laughs> I think like it's never going to be done. Pretty much every week, we're like adding something. Yeah, yeah. It'll never be done. This is my garage, so I completely understand where you're coming. No, from. it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we got one side done, and we're trying to figure out what we want to do for the other side because there's like no decorations over there. Uh, but we're going to figure out what exactly we want to put on that side. I was talking about that side will be like a whiskey shelf, but we'll see. We'll see in a few episodes. Hey, but I like a good project. Always always room for improvement. You know, you guys can have a whole episode. Cigar guys go to Home Depot. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about that fucking story. <laughs> we, we, we've talked about that, doing more of like a vlog, a daily kind of routine or, you know, behind the scenes to add more character to us because we're always in the studio. But like what we're we doing outside the studio, you know, so I completely agree with that. Do you guys yeah. have regular conversations anymore? Or do you save everything for the podcast now? <laughs> What's unfortunate <laughs> is. Uh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. No. Yeah. So, I mean, we have we still have great conversations outside of the podcast. And unfortunately, sometimes they're even better outside of the podcast. And then we're sitting there like, man, I wish we were sitting in front of the mics right now. Yeah. We got to record it. <laughs> yeah unfortunately due to the uh nature of uh the way things are in this climate not everything that me and jerry have a conversation over and see can be just completely stated so that i'm glad true. we don't have mics in front of us at all times but well, well there, there are some times we have people on and then we'll have like a one hour talk after the podcast really you know, go deeper into a conversation that we couldn't have recorded you know so i completely yeah. understand well, we do the same thing. That's why we have uh, the After Herf on Patreon. Mm-hmm. So it nice. all started. We had like a couple guests that didn't want to leave after the interview. So we're like, let's just throw together a show uh, It's where the guests can be unfiltered. And that turned into the After Herf. And then uh, just this year, 
in uh, 2024, we put it on Patreon because uh, we get a little risque. Yeah, right, right, right. Is the risque. Patreon like always a paywall or do you have like a free version too? Uh, that's just a paywall. Yes. Okay. There's some perks for that and it's definitely so far getting some traction for it. I think we're happy with the direction that's going for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say we were just uh, looking at um, that secret clip, that secret audio you got about Stephen Hawking. I just can't believe that you guys actually got access to that. <laughs> Can you believe that that Stephen Hawking like somehow gave Caleb that that uh, voicemail? I know, and he's dead too. So like, I don't understand. What... <laughs> Shit just comes back, man. You know what? Someone just handed me an envelope with this uh, tape recording of a voicemail from Stephen Hawking. So <laughs> things just show up at my house sometimes. Listen, you know, you never know what you're gonna get. You know, Mike Tyson sometimes calls in. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> Mike comes in. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome you can understand through the list still i don't yes. know yeah <laughs> i, feel, I feel like mike might be amongst us right now <laughs> he's sitting in the corner over here actually he's in florida but uh <laughs> so um you guys have had quite a lot of guests on your show before um you know john herf was uh your most recent one great episode great guy great brand nothing but good things to say about those guys uh, or about crown heads. What is um, your dream guest that you would like to have on the podcast? I feel like this answer is going to differ for the three of us. Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll start with Geo. Oh well, I mean, are we talking cigar industry or just overall? Um, how about both? So strictly cigars, and then if you got like you know a celebrity or whatever you want to add in there, go for it. I mean, one that would tie in to both for me is I would like to talk to Arnold. I think that. Would mm. be good. Yeah. Um, cigar industry, probably like a like a Carlito Fuente. Mm-hmm. That would be a cool one. Just to, like some of the legacy like pioneers or like a Don Pepin or like Ernesto Perez Carrillo. Those would be really cool people to talk to in my eyes, just because they have their hands in so many different brands. Even like a guy like AJ Fernandez, who might not be as well known outside, mm-hmm. but this dude blends everybody's stuff. Right. Yeah, AJ, I mean, you never know. You might be smoking a cigar that happens to be blended by AJ. That's just how, you know, how wide his reach is. Mm-hmm. Hmm. What about you, Caleb? Um, well, I think person outside of the industry, I think Max Crosby would be awesome to have on. We've talked about it plenty of times, like uh, maybe try to slide in the DMs. I've uh, slid into Joe Burrow's DMs before because <laughs> I know he's a cigar guy. Uh, still no response. Waiting on that, Joey B. Um <laughs> But uh, someone in the industry, I would say, you know what? I'm a big fan of Cavalier cigars. Hmm. So uh, we're trying to get Sebastian on. And he is moving from Switzerland back to Texas. Okay. So we're thinking with the move, uh, maybe we can make that happen. Yeah, just tell him to stop in New York first on his way back to Texas. And then I'll be right. make it easy. Duh. You get a layover, you know, <laughs> in Buffalo. You know, stop on by. We'll get you some chicken wings. You'll be good. <laughs> I feel like uh, for me... Yeah, I hate to touch on it and kind of steal Gio's answer for, I, but I want to go a little different on this. I feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger is cigar industry. Uh, that guy is cigars. I mean, how many videos do you see of him smoking cigars? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's been on the cover of Cigar Aficionado magazine. Uh, I mean, he does a lot for the cigar community. Yeah. Uh, non cigar industry, I would love to have the Buffalo Bills quarterback, uh, Josh Allen, in studio to smoke a cigar. Yeah, that would be insane. I feel like that'd be fucking awesome. If we see him over at the Cigar Lounge, we'll make sure to let him know. That guy is so cool, man. Yeah, we got to get that. He's Gabe funny Davis as hell, too. If you've ever watched him, like, on, uh, yeah. uh, what is it, Sunday Conversations on yeah. Barstool and stuff. He's, he's very witty. So I feel like we'd vibe. Yeah. You're right about Arnold, though. He's kind of like the staple of OG cigar media, so to say. Like, you know, Cigar Aficionado. He's done many interviews with them. Uh, all the magazines and stuff like that. So, yeah, I would definitely consider him, like, you know, actor, and then cigar industry is definitely like, you know, number two or number three when you think about him. I mean, is there an 80s movie he's in where he doesn't smoke a cigar? Like I, Predator. I can't think of one. Yeah. around in the fucking <laughs> woods chasing some monster. He's got a cigar the whole fucking movie. Shooting fucking machine guns. Yeah, that I was mean, back when movies were cool. Yeah, yeah, man, you ain't kidding. The effects weren't great, but they were cool. <laughs> Predator still had some great effects for its time. All right. Well, nowadays in the movies, if you're like smoking a cigar or anything, you're considered like the villain. Like you yeah. rarely do the good guys in modern movies smoke cigars. Mostly they're like the villain type characters. Have you ever had any um, 
like issues when you brought a guest on um maybe like you couldn't air the episode or like like i know you guys kind of touched on like timing didn't work uh audio didn't work but was there one big one where you were like really upset about that you couldn't upload uh yeah um we had one that was a whiskey industry guy who i really yeah. wish the video w- would have worked but all we got was the audio off of it mm-hmm. uh actually there was like a a summer grid storm or some shit uh all the power went out on our street so i was like dude we need to figure this out we have like one hour like what the hell are we gonna do so i actually reached out to a buddy of mine that owns a local brick and mortar here shameless plug here smokers haven of western new york uh probably one of the best pipe makers in this entire country oh, okay. and I, I will back that 100 percent. but he was nice enough to let us come very last minute set all of our stuff up run that podcast right out of his brick and mortar and we are so thankful for that that we still at least got the audio oh wow but uh this is with uh greg metz he's actually the head distiller at mgp uh midwest grain products in mm-hmm. indiana so i mean obviously yeah. if you're in the whiskey industry you should be familiar with mgp or yeah. old elk as well yeah. right now he's okay master. yeah so, yeah, we had um, we've had a couple episodes where, and it's unfortunate because we can't use it, but we get the video, but we don't get the audio. So we've had a few episodes that we just couldn't even use altogether because, you know, you're just looking at video of these guys talking with no sound. So we're considering doing like uh, what do you call it, like uh, voiceovers, like really bad voiceovers <laughs> bad or something. Reading. Yeah. Okay. I well, think that happened with us uh, in an early episode yeah. when we had Moel Robbie from uh, Tatuaje on. And the, wow. something was it the video? No, it was the audio. The yeah. audio, the audio, uh, never recorded. Uh, I didn't realize how fast, uh, like a SD card fills up with audio, uh, file wise. So uh, the thing cut out after like ten minutes. Yeah, so I had to delete all that stuff. This is obviously in the beginning of the podcast, but uh, we are fortunate enough to still get audio from the actual cameras, uh, microphones. Uh, they sound like absolute dog shit, but I mean, it was still arable. <laughs> there's captions, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, did yeah, like captions, captions on it or something. I mean, it was brutal. Yeah, that was. You almost feel bad for the guests too. Like, yeah. hey, man, you just wasted an hour and a half of your life. How well, do you feel? Only once had we had to ask someone to come back and redo a whole episode, and then even on top of that, unfortunately, with YouTube censorship, it got taken down. Oh, <laughs> so, it's like, oh my god, it's like. Are you guys really catching the censorship that bad? Uh, yeah. Do you want to talk about this? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, let's hear it. Yeah. If you want to talk about it, you can, but I'm saying, like, we, we, we've been pretty fortunate in that we haven't really dealt mm-hmm. with any censorship issues. So, we see it more on that uh, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, we yeah, get, we get sure. shit on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram hates me. I will say that um, and we kind of pinpointed the reason um, why we got mass censorship last time, and it's specifically because um, the use of the tobacco websites in the description mainly they say okay. that even if you have them in the video they can still get you but obviously it's easier to find if it's in the description um so we took out any links that link to like a cigar shop so i mean including our own cigar shop um any of our you know any guests that come on we have to basically say it in the video and hope that youtube doesn't catch it but you know or put like you know go find you know crown head cigars for example um, you know, cause you can look them up and you'll find them no problem. But we had, um, I think around close to 10 videos that were taken down and then maybe about a hundred that were age restricted. Really? Number one. So man. we, we age restrict our videos anyway. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were like, well, you know, I we're think not really- if you, if you click when you guys are uploading, obviously you know how it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, not made for children and right. it, it'll, it'll help you guys out significantly. Uh, right. We, we have talked about, and we still might end up doing it, just age restricting them off the bat. But we figured that, like, you know, it, it, as long I don't mind if they age restrict them by themselves, but when you get to the issue of them just taking down videos, yeah, it's a little different for sure. Yeah, I'd be pissed. Have you guys ever thought of using maybe like an alternative uh, website like Rumble or something like that? So we had, well, we do have Rumble and we have it so where it automatically uploads from YouTube to Rumble. But for some reason, that connection just stops working every once in a while so you'll have like videos from three weeks ago but nothing recent um sure so you know the other alternative for rumble is go in and upload them manually but we also use we host our audio podcast with spotify and they give you the option to upload video as well so if you're on the spotify app you can just watch the video 
or listen to the audio. Yeah. I didn't know they did that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then Spotify, I mean, as far as we know, they really don't take stuff down. I mean, you have to get pretty extreme to get taken down off of Spotify. Yeah. Like a Joey Diaz or a fucking <laughs> Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Some crazy shit. Right. Man, so like, that, if you're not Alex Jones, you should be fine. But if you're Alex Jones, you're not going to get on Spotify, unfortunately. Unless you're on Joe Rogan. <laughs> right. Exactly. But yeah, he can so, take I mean, whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah. Those are still up. So, I mean, I don't think they've taken down a single episode from Joe Rogan. Or anyone you know else that might be considered controversial. Can you imagine if Joe Rogan decided to leave and say, "I'm done uploading videos to YouTube." I, well, I feel I like that. Would he, hurt. I think he already yeah, he or Spotify. Spotify. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's off YouTube. Yeah. Yes. Well, they tried. They tried to like blackball him, and Spotify's like, I "Yeah, remember. no." <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> the employees got all pissed off at him, like because some guest he Certain had. Certain guest, yeah. yeah. There's a blacklist. So you all recently hit like over a hundred episodes. So. What's what, what would you say is your best one or favorite one you had? Or even favorite guest? I got to be honest with you. I think I can speak for maybe one or both of my co-hosts here. But uh, when we had Matt Booth on, that was the fucking hell of an episode. <laughs> it was fucking funny. That was 100% my favorite episode, too. <laughs> Matt Booth is such a character. My abs hurt at the end of it. Yeah. That one uh, definitely not much cigar talk by any means. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But also, there was cigar talk. It was weird. No, Matt Booth's a really funny guy. We definitely uh, are trying to get him to come on, too. I uh, met him a couple of times. Great guy. Absolutely great guy. I really liked having on Nick Malello from Foundation, too, recently. Mm. That was awesome, especially because he makes cigars for Joe Rogan, too. Yeah. And he, he was a great guest. I'd love to have him on again. And we could we talked the shit with him. And we could have asked so many more questions and went on about so many more of his product line. And we didn't even get to half the stuff that we... I don't even ask. think we touched a tenth of it. Yeah, that's <laughs> and true. It, I mean, it, we were at like an hour and 40 minutes, and we had to kind of cut it short. But. Yeah, Nick is one of those guys. I don't know if you've got to, like, have a conversation with him, but he knows so much about tobacco that he could tell you, well, this strand originally ori or, you know, started in Mexico, and then the crosswinds brought it up to Connecticut. <laughs> and, like, my brain was already hurting by the time he got to crosswinds. Yeah, every episode or podcast I've seen – Featuring him, uh, I mean, it's usually like a two-hour, three-hour episode. There's just so much to talk about with him. And like you said, not only with the cigar knowledge, but then he goes off on tangents and you guys start talking about other stuff. Okay. So he, every time I ask someone that, usually he comes up. If he's not the first one, he's definitely like top three. Yeah. I, I would also shout out uh, Jake Sanders from Crown Heads. He's probably been on our show and the After Her for about 10 times. I, I freaking love that kid. He's, he's just like our boy from Ohio who just comes to chill with us. He's like the unofficial yeah. fourth member. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Like when he's in town, it's like a staple mark. We are going to record something, whether it be an after her for the Patreon or do some kind of a, you know, official down to her podcast episode where we do their latest cigar. Uh, Jake's always taking care of us. He's always coming in and, you know, just absolutely bringing the heat and just having a good time. And plus, he, he makes our little buddy here happy because uh, <laughs> they're, they're both insane conspiracy theorists. Yeah. Mm. Get so, them two going. It's actually really, really hilarious. They were gonna start a sub, uh, like a like a sub <laughs> podcast called Crazy Jake and QAnon Caleb. <laughs> you so, should see our Instagram DMs. They're insane. Well, speaking of that, okay. what, what would be the craziest controversial topic that you guys talked about on the show? Hmm. Uh, uh, I'd say recently with John, we asked him about the little uh, controversy he had with Pravada cigars. Even, it wasn't much of a controversy from Crown Heads, but like the internet, the interwebs were buzzing. I'd say bit. the most con like controversial episode we ever had was when we reviewed a Pravada cigar. We were supposed to have Brian Dessen mm -hmm. on the show with us. Hmm. Um, he actually ended up uh, not coming on the show because we were three minutes late. Which I thought was a little extreme. Obviously, if you have no clue what it goes into running the show, I thought it was a little extreme to just completely cancel it. But we still reviewed the cigar, and we actually got a lot of we got a lot of backlash for featuring a product from Pravada on our show. Well, it seems that uh, anything that surrounds Pravada, there's always going to be some sort of drama or controversy. Almost any time I see you know news about it, whether it's yeah. You know, with crown heads or you guys or whoever, something always comes out of that. And I think, honestly, I'm going to say it, I think it's intentional on his part. 
Oh, I mean, dude, he's a he's a millennial, dude. He's like us. We <laughs> we know how to stir shit, especially with the older generation. And I know I I can talk to my father. Uh, nobody can get under my father's skin, dude. I know the buttons to press on this dude. I can get this dude to fucking basically yeah. have an aneurysm. <laughs> like I I just know. So I'm sure he knows. He knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. It's publicity. It's I wouldn't say it's a stunt. I mean, it's great marketing on his part. I mean, he gets his name out there. He's definitely doing something right. Mm. And I'm not hating on him because we met him at PCA this past year. And like, I think we had like a good hour and a half conversation. Uh, I mean, in person, he's definitely a little bit different than Very I think eccentric. the, the uh, camera. And he's just doing his thing. He's making his money. I can't listen. Make your money, man. I, pre- I, I respect that. I think our... Our, my favorite or our most controversial uh, conspiracy that we did on an on an after her that's still on YouTube was either the birds aren't real. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people were upset by it. Or or the one where we said Australia isn't real and oh, it's just yeah. an <laughs> island off England somewhere. Yeah. And a lot was... of people on TikTok were, no, were commenting on it. It's so there funny you say one. that because we we did that topic for a little bit about a year ago when we were starting. And today it came up on our TikTok as like a one year ago thing. So I uploaded it this morning and we're already getting comments like animals are real. Like, what are you talking about? I've seen birds die. I'm like, dude, come on. <laughs> nah, man, dude, they're just hitting up. Uh, they're going up onto the poles and shit to charge up. Exactly. Like, they're not real, dude. Yeah. Their eyeballs are cameras. Everyone knows that. Yeah. But the irony of it is regardless of your for or against it is that when people blow up in the comments and get angry for no reason, it boosts the, the video. You know, it and, it and not it, only keeps it, yeah. it keeps it up and Trending. current and it refreshes uh, it also brings me joy because I'm sitting on the other side reading it like, this guy thinks we're serious. What the hell is wrong with this guy? It's a parody. Wait, wait, wait. But- you guys aren't serious? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, if you ever go to like the FBI museum in uh, D.C., they do have on display like little remote control birds yeah. and like dragonflies that were cameras used to spy back in like the cold Cold yeah. War era days. That's true. That's you fact. see what I deal with here. Well, it's true. So I, what say, I, I will say, I, I mean, there has been a lot of these. Uh, it's basically confirmed the fake insects that have cameras and stuff like that. So I mean, it's not so far fetched to say that it's not possible. I'm not saying that there's you know, every bird. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's not what we're saying. Not, Come yeah. on, every single bird. I, it's I like one wrong. out of six. I, I could be wrong, but there's a Black Mirror episode where like all these bees were like end up killing people or like little insects, yeah. their metal or whatever. Maybe it's not Black Mirror. I forget. Like that Target thing, the drone that would like put a bullet in your head. I did yeah. see. Yeah, there was like some advertisement for like a little tiny drone that's like this big, but it, it could literally just kill you. It's like a government thing, but whatever, man. Um, <laughs> if that's how I go, that's how I go. Yeah, you know. Me personally, I trust our government 100, percent so I'm not worried. If I, I know, I, I can <laughs> yeah. see by that ATF hat. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, it's alcohol, <laughs> tobacco, and firearms. That's just my. Three favorite things. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that too. Yeah. Oh, All um, kind of like I thought the uh, was the Helen Keller faking it. Oh, that one pissed a lot of people off too. That's a good that one. That was actually really funny. Helen Keller was she really just faking it? Well, yeah. Like, like, how did she write all those books? I don't understand. I don't know. <laughs> I think the biggest uh, part of the conspiracy that made me kind of believe it was that uh, it's rumored she flew a plane. <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of like. What? No, this is bullshit. I like, thought, no, so I thought that there was just confusion between her and Amelia Earhart. Yeah, no, no. I just apparently she flew, like flew a plane over uh, the Atlantic for like twenty minutes or something. I don't know. I, I just well, I mean, I, I'm well, sure they. Sure, I just can't see it. I'm sure they make them with braille, so like all the buttons and all the levers and stuff have braille on them. So I don't see what the problem is. I mean, too bad she couldn't enjoy the scenery. No. <laughs> God, God, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, that's a fair point. Uh, yeah, I mean, beautiful view up from the plane. It's just I mean, too bad you can't see. Couldn't you have saw that coming? <laughs> she didn't. She didn't. Yeah, see. Set up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's been a lot of good conspiracies, a lot of uh, good show topics. Uh, hey, man, we're rolling. We're having fun with it still. Mm-hmm. I think that's the most important part of it. Exactly. Uh, keeps me out of the local watering hole so I don't get in trouble for my wife. No, exactly. I mean, it's easy to say I'm going to go to the backyard bar instead of going out to the bar. Exactly. If you're going to drink and have fun, you might as well do it at home instead of going out. That's what the wife would say. Yeah, exactly. She's full on board. She's completely on board with us. Yeah. I always tell my wife I could be doing a lot worse things than sitting in the garage with these two guys. 
<laughs> That's debatable. But, I mean, with debatable. all the cameras and the lights, you never know what's going on. <laughs> oh my Caleb God. would be, be <laughs> doing like uh, gay porn, probably. Yeah, I could see him. He grows a really good mustache. So, so you guys yeah, have yeah. the uh, down to herf only fans? Not he yet, does. not yet. But you just sparked an idea. <laughs> we'll play it off the Patreon. <laughs> one, of, one of the first things Jared did was uh, secure our Cigar Guys only fans link. We haven't used it yet, but you know, at least it's out there. No. It's like sexy cigars and sexy feet. Featuring you guys. What if it's like uh, I'll show you, you should get one of your 60. guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Check out this Gordo, and uh, don't don't exclude the dog walkers. <laughs> uh, for those guys too. Real windblown six there, buddy. <laughs> that's that's a joke about uh, small guys and like a windblown six inches of snow. If if you catch my drift. Yeah, we've been getting uh absolutely pummeled with snow the last like mm. two weeks here so yeah one of our clips uh, there was you know how they measure it all there I mean, yeah basically he found some weather guy who it's like oh this is a windblown six tell that to your girlfriends guys and <laughs> he, i'm sure he got fired <laughs> probably <laughs> hope so i hope not i i hope he's uh, still on the air but i it's, it's 2024 they what should allow more humor out, right? was it out of colorado yeah, I mean, if they oh, still do naked, fired. if they still do naked news, he's got a job there being their weather guy. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna have to start allowing more humor anyway because no one's watching the news anyway. This is I hate the news. It's all negative. They have to at least make it entertaining. But you're right; it's all it's all negative BS. Well, as as a law enforcement officer here, uh, I do I can't watch it. It's yeah. just every every story is just like I get enough depression at work. I I don't I don't need to be more depressed. Yeah. Now that I'm depressed, but I mean, like, you watch shit and you're just like, eh, I don't want to fucking watch this shit. Well, yeah, like you said, it's all negative. I feel like a lot of people get their news from, like, Twitter or Facebook or just read the headlines. Then they go to, like, you know, watch SNL, and then it becomes <laughs> real to them, you know? Yeah, you ain't kidding. I'm a fan of the Twitter news. I only get what's happening. Oh, okay. Gabe Davis is out. Fuck. All right. That's, that's all I need. I don't need the extra details. Yeah. <laughs> but... No, I even think, like, what's funny on a law enforcement perspective with news, like, there'll be incidents, like, that they're reporting the official version of events, and you're like, I was there. That's not what happened at all. Damn. But, yeah. Yeah. That That's the part that I don't like. The The, the stories get twisted to be sexier, mm -hmm. and it's like, that's not what happened. It's all about ad sales anyways, right? Yeah. Yeah. How many commercials can we fit into this 30-minute uh, program? <laughs> Too Pfizer many. will buy at least four. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they're all pharmaceuticals. In Pfizer. Yeah. I got a question for you guys. How is that rye whiskey that you're drinking? And uh, are you guys smoking your uh, Basa cigars? Because I'm not sure. I can't tell what you're smoking, but I see the box there. Yeah, we are smoking the Basa cigar. Uh, but the whiskey, I mean, it's... So like I said in the very beginning, it's only two years of age. They have the rye and the bourbon. But I'll tell you what, it's uh, yeah, actually... I'm the uh, bourbon one. It's pretty smooth. It's got some good flavor on it. Um, I get a little bit of, on the bourbon, especially I get a little bit of caramel and some vanilla in there. The rye is a little bit more on the, I, I don't want to say bitter side, but it's more of those, you know, drier notes, but super smooth. I was actually surprised when we first had it. Yeah. For a two year, that's crazy. But, uh, I'm a rye guy. So I, if yeah. I see that, I would definitely give that a chance. I think the rye is MSRP is 50. So, uh, 10th mountain whiskey and spirits. If you go to their website or, you know, look through retailers and stuff, you should find it. Perfect. And you said that was a, they're out of Colorado? Yeah, they're out of Vail, Colorado. Yeah. Colorado's got a few distilleries that are kind of doing pretty Have well. Have you guys ever tried Old Elk? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Another That's shameless plug. <laughs> it's a company I really enjoy. That's one of uh, the lounge we go to. They always have it. So that's like every once in a while, it's like, ah, okay, I'll have some. Yeah. What's your go-to from them? Um, I would say just the their original bourbon, honestly. Just the straight, just the straight, yeah. I, I, that's, yeah that's, so that's I'm good. more of a straight, straight bourbon $50 guy. Bottle. Yeah, exactly. I'm more of a straight bourbon guy. Uh, Jared and Mark lean towards Scotch, and then Zach is the one that goes like full proof, hundred percent or hundred proof whiskey. So we all we have a kind of a range there, but I usually stick with just like straight bourbon, uh, usually around the 40 50 percent range. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Macallan 12 and Macallan 18. See, I haven't hit that po like that yeah. point in my life yet with the scotch, man. I just uh, fucking scotch. I, I don't like that peaty, 
malty. I don't like that, man. I, I don't know. I feel like scotch gives me heartburn. <laughs> I, I would say like Lagavulin has more of that peatiness and like the kind of burn a little bit maybe, but not McAllen 12, especially 18. But, yeah. just, you know. Just give me the old uh, Johnny Walker black. That'll do. Oof. I don't know about all that. Well, the, but... the, the, well the double <laughs> black has a smoky taste to it. That's pretty good. Yeah. No I scotch mean, for me. I would so say I, I drink a lot of Japanese whiskey. Oh, okay. So oh, that's good. Similar for it. Um, yeah. So and they try to like mimic the taste of scotch. So I'm I'm not a, opposed to that. Yeah. It's um, so floral though, <laughs> and citrusy. <laughs> Yeah, Harper. so we got uh, Mark originally. He never drank whiskey or anything. So the way we got him to drink whiskey, we started him a Japanese whiskey because it was like you said, it's floral. It's kind of on the lighter side, and then that was the transition to scotch and whiskey from there. Yeah. So you guys find yourselves to be like proof whores in your whiskey, or do, or you guys like it like ninety proof, or do you chase that like crazy hazmat hundred and forty? I, I would say that Zach is the one that chases it. Um, okay. I've had, I have had a bottle of, um, Jack Daniels, uh, I, I believe was their full proof. I think that one was, um, 68 or 69%. And I tried it and I was like, you know what? I can only do old fashions with this. So I'm definitely not chasing the full proof or anything like that. I get that. I mean, I would definitely, I mean, you did the right thing, you know, with the transition to Japanese whiskey. Mm. Plus, they uh, seems to just always pair well with a cigar. Yeah. So, just a nice little, anyone who's looking to try that. Also, we've been getting into a lot of, like, Armagnac, Armagnac uh, finish. Because, mm. like, recently, now that we've been doing this long enough, we noticed the cigar cuts will always have, like, some form of Armagnac cask mm. blended in there. So, it seemed to just, I enjoyed it, like, on... Our uh, most recent episode, we had the Bardstown uh, Chateau de Labode, Labode. Labode, whatever I don't know, some French Labode. Chef. Yeah, and that was finished. It was Bardstown finished in Armagnac cast, and it was fucking good. We're gonna have to look into that. We were, I think, we were watching that episode too, and we were like, "What is this? We gotta like, you know, look into it and try it out." Yeah, I mean, it's from what I gathered, it's it, you know, it's not super allocated, but it's mm-hmm. not beat to find. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm a, like I said, about 180 bucks. Okay. Yeah, being in Orlando, fortunately for us, it's kind of easy to find oh. certain things that we're looking for, whether it's at a liquor shop or like this random bar, upscale bar that might have it. So it's like if we're looking for something, we'll be able to find it eventually. Sure. Yeah, we get fucked on that. Here, <laughs> um, are we allowed to uh, swear on this? Here, I don't know. Too late. No, I, I, I just got a, a lot <laughs> of fucking crazy shit. Yeah, I don't. But. Uh, that was it. Uh, Castle and Key had some pretty good stuff that we did too recently. I was really enjoying that. Their weeded was really yeah. good. Yeah, they have a really uh oh, even the Jefferson Sweet Wheat that was, and the 1792 Sweet Wheat or 1792. Mm. But we did the Jefferson's weeded. Yeah, we uh we like the weeded bourbons here. Pair well, pair as well with the cigar. What are you looking at there? No, oh, just... we got our. Of course, one of our go tos actually the Old Forester 1920. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh prohibition. Proof, so. prohibition, yeah. 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 So, I mean, we used to drink it a lot because when we go to the lounge, it was still decently priced. And then they kind of bumped it up after, you know, all the Bidenomics that's been going on. But um, a, a scotch that we drink that actually you guys might like because it's not PD or anything that's usually what you would associate with scotch. But Monkey Shoulder, it's like a $30 bottle. And it's I on the actually like side. monkey shoulder. Yeah, and you, it's funny you bring that up. Yeah, that is actually one of the scotches I do I do like. We no <laughs> drinks that Adam drinks that. We all literally time. just had that at the last cigar event that we went. To. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's, it's great with old fashions too, and you know the lounge that we go to, it's still twelve bucks for a double. So we're like hoping yeah. they don't find out. <laughs> oh yeah, man, I like that. Yeah. Have you guys uh, tried uh, Old Forester's new expression, the ten year? What is it, the nineteen twenty four? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Purple bottle, it, dude. It's hard to get, but I've seen it. I haven't tried it yet, but it's got it's got a little bit of a price tag, a little mm. bit of that secondary market price. We tag can already. ask around. We, we mainly drink nineteen ten and nineteen twenty. Yeah. Well, if you know somebody that's got the old Forester hookup, man, that's who I would ask. Yeah, yeah. We'll try and get a couple bottles, and then we'll let you guys know. Yeah. We'll, we'll find a way to get that up north. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, so, I mean, um, Zach and Mark, too, they're always in New York because they got 
you know, Albanian relatives up there. So there's always a chance, you know, multiple times a year that one of us will be in New York. Well, if you're in Buffalo, you know, you, you got a number. We'll, we can always try and coordinate <laughs> something there. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Yeah, we'll have to try some of those cigars. They look very intriguing. So we're actually it? yeah, it's Mexican San Andreas wrapper, right? Actually, no. So um, it's a uh, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper on the base up. Okay. Uh, I was actually gonna let you guys know that we're gonna you know send you some up to try, uh, oh, and you cool. can do Perfect. you can do your honest uh, cigar reviews on there. Right. I have no problem doing that. I think that'd be fun. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. So spoiler alert: um, our next one is possibly San Andreas, though. Hopping right on board with the rest of the industry. <laughs> Everybody's doing San Andreas, man. I guess so. Yeah, we we're we we're going back and forth between um, that and Connecticut Broadleaf, but with the amount we want to do, it's going to be hard to get Connecticut Broadleaf in that quantity. I was going to say, damn, good luck if you're going Connecticut. You're going to have to yeah. raise them prices. Right. I mean, for us, it's possible, but we're, we figure we might just wait and do like some sort of limited release or something like that. But you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So you guys are uh, one of you is a retailer, right? So, uh, He's my a retail shop. So we have an online shop. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So like an e-commerce. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we sell online, but we also sell in brick and mortar and actually cigar hustler is one of our newest ones that sells the base of cigar there. Um, so a lot of places locally in Orlando and some in like in Michigan and stuff like that. Yeah. So I saw I was, that. yeah, I was watching, um, you there's like i got you were saying there's like a really large like albanian community up there and like between the three brands you guys got preference now my understanding was you know you were one of the blenders the formula thing you had some guy that was like well, what's your formula yeah exactly yeah, yeah. He, he was trying to get it well what's funny too is this guy most of his business is blending his own cigars and rolling his own cigars and selling them so yeah. i'm like i don't think this is the right guy to tell anyway yeah no fuck that you know Go go ask another. Uh, go ask Saka what he how he blends his exact. Oh form. yeah. See what answer you get, dude. Yeah, it's but, becoming more popular too for you know the blenders to keep it on the down low because uh, especially with you know some of the guys in the industry that are hunting to you know rip off different brands and formulas and stuff like yeah. that. And hey, you, you know your sauce is your sauce, man. Exactly. But yeah, now, uh, you guys are definitely gonna love it. So we'll get uh, you know some information from you and send it up. Yeah, I appreciate that for awesome. sure. Thank you. So what was that? So what was that whole process of blending that, you know, going into? So what, is it you that it was you that selected the blend or did you go down as like a team here? So uh, at the time it was myself, Mark and Zach. Okay. And uh, so we basically were trying to come to a, unan a unanimous decision on the blend. Uh, we had a general idea of what we wanted. So we went to the guy that runs the factory in the Dominican Republic. We said, this is kind of what we want. Um, and then we let him use his expertise to give us different selections to choose from. And then we kind of just said, okay, we'll smoke all these by ourselves and come together and see which ones we like best. And, you know, it turns out we all like that same one the best. It was the highest quality, best flavor. So we went with that. That's pretty dope. You know, getting a consensus like that. So we've done like some barrel picks. And so getting a consensus among three people is a pain in the ass. Let yeah. Alone. You know, some of these go up to like five and six. Right. Yeah. Especially too, because like, you know, everyone's palate is different. Especially like Mark and I, we differ on a lot of things when it comes to smoking cigars. So the fact that it, you know, came down to that same one was, you know, pretty much, I don't know if it was luck or it just, you know, it was a really great blend, but uh, it was fortunate to come to that conclusion. Yeah. I mean, hey, it sounds like you guys are in there. And hey, you know, Mike and them Cigar Hustle boys, they're always good with pushing product too. And yeah. it sounds like it's going real well for you guys. I think that's awesome. We're definitely excited to work with them. I mean, they're great guys, but they also know, yeah, like you said, they push product. I mean, and they're honest too. So they, you know, they don't, they're not going to push something that they think is just mid or whatever. You know, it's got to be a good product. I know Mike, uh, Mike is not going to back anything he doesn't believe in. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Kudos to you guys. Uh, obviously, getting into Cigar Hustler. That's an accomplishment. Uh, like I said, I know Mike personally. He's not gonna put. He's not gonna push garbage. I know that. Right. No. Yeah. All those guys. I mean, they're they're about business for sure. Like they're not gonna push garbage. Like you said. When was the last Can't time have the word hustle in your name if you're not a <laughs> exactly? When was the last time you guys been down to Florida? 
I'm actually going to be there next month, but I haven't been down there probably since 2012. <laughs> like in our, be, in, oh, in our area? I'll be at the Great Smoke. Your bachelor party. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We did go to Miami. Oh, I forgot that. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Listen, some things, those can't be spoken of. <laughs> oh, I no. didn't even go on that trip. <laughs> no, we were we were there just uh, fishing, <laughs> deep water fishing. Yeah, we were on a boat. Oh, yeah, <laughs> as one does. Uh, There's pictures of us on a boat. That's what we did. Yeah. So where in Florida are you going to come visit? <laughs> I'll be down in West Palm for the Great Smoke. Oh, okay, nice. yeah. All right, good, good. Well, if you have time, stop by. Are you guys going to TGS? No, we're not going to be there uh, this year. Uh, we're okay. waiting for the PCA, so we're going to do that. Yeah, we'll be a PCA too, man. We'll there have, uh, grab a drink or something. We'll, uh, Rocky Patel always has beer on draft, so we'll have to meet up for a beer. Okay, so that's our meeting spot. There we go. That's the meeting spot. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go to RP, man. Shout out my boy, Max. Yeah. So, last question: What are some of your future aspirations or future plans? You know, New Year. I'm sure you guys got some plans that you got going for it. What can you share with us about some goals you want to hit? Oof. What do you guys think? I, I feel like I'm the one that's always sharing aspirations among the three of us. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm curious to what this is. A great question for these two. I'd love to hear the answer. I hit our long term goals on an episode of, of like, like two episodes ago, but I think long term in like the next year to two, I'd I'd like to be like you guys and push out uh, our own cigar line. It doesn't have to be named like down to her for anything, but I feel like we'd like to get into that game mm -hmm. eventually. Um, you know, just as long as we keep a good audience and subscribers and followers up i'd like to see the after grow a little more so we get in a little extra money from the patreon but uh definitely like cigar game i'd like to be in it like like you guys are with our own line i think uh and i think we could do that yeah that's definitely a you know something in the pipeline i mean more so it's just I, I enjoy the fun aspect of it being able to sit down with you know two of my buddies smoke cigars and just shoot the shit um getting it to the point where it's uh easier to just in the last year we went were able to switch from a point where it was like a struggle to like i guess be sort of taken seriously in the industry and now we're like we saw that uh switch over where it's like yeah you know uh we're good this day okay perfect sweet yeah. like we know we're past that of feeling like the new kids on the block feeling and like i i enjoy that i think it's you know having some respect on our name i guess is cool mm -hmm long term it's just more so keep going with that and it's just like oh hey you guys i don't know if we ever reach you know like a half wheel or cigar aficionado level but hey you know if you're not striving to be the very very top what are you doing exactly yeah, yeah. jerry what do you think i i would say touching on what geo said that would always be my aspiration uh obviously i don't think i'm not going to say anything's impossible but obviously being up there with like ca and half wheel you know, those are some of the most reputable companies that do cigar work. Uh, but, you know, I would like to be like one of those groups where, you know, people look forward to what we put out as like a top 10 or top 25 list eventually and, and get to a point where people are looking forward to listening to what we thought were the best cigars of the year. You know, just just being an asset to the cigar world, uh, pushing out cigar knowledge, uh distinguishing the differences between garbage hand rolled cigars mm -hmm. and flavored tobacco and premium cigars and just pushing out knowledge and, and getting rid of all the, you know, the, the garbage negative stuff that people associate with it. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, you guys can definitely do it. Three people, you know, three man team, you guys can do all those things, whether it's the premium cigar line or become someone that is really big in the industry. I mean, I think if, if you're doing it like this, I think, everyone should be striving to be one of the best absolutely i just want to do it where you know again we all know cigar talk man it's pretty dry sometimes <laughs> right like i can't sit here and talk an hour and a half about well i'm getting notes of chocolate and mm -hmm. like, i can't do that shit man i have to be able to sit here i got to be able to laugh and shoot the shit with my boy yeah. so i mean it's got to be fun Absolutely. And like you said earlier in the podcast, if you're still having fun, then that's the most important part because you can't keep going if it's getting dry and it's getting boring. I, I have a question for you guys. Do you ever get to the points? Obviously, you guys just hit your first year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever get to points amongst the few of you guys where you thought, man, this is getting a little hard. It's getting a little hard to you know, get everybody together. Uh, you know, have, Was there ever a conversation of ending the podcast? Because I know I can say honestly but amongst the three of us, at one point, there was talk of just ending it. We haven't had that talk. Um, 
I think the most similar to that would be we're getting ready to do like a particular episode and one of us would be like, I just don't know if I want to do it or I'm not feeling it today. But there hasn't been talk about stopping. Yeah. Um, I don't think that we've even reached this like that consideration. really early for us. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Or, like within the first six months. So like nothing to, recent, but yeah, to, you know, we had those conversations. To add on what Alex is saying, I think it's more or less, um, I think in th- uh, around Thanksgiving, Christmas time frame, we filmed like three to four a few times in a week. So people were kind of burnt out. Um, but luckily there's four of us. So, you know, as long as we have two, three of us in a guest or so, it's always fun. Um, and never really want to give up. Just keep, you know, keep changing it up every time. Uh, like Alex said earlier in the beginning, we are always changing something up and always reevaluating what we're doing. How can we get better? Uh, new topics, you know. Yeah, and I will say, yeah, kind of like what you said, Jared, around like holiday Christmas time is when it starts to get like, oh, I need a break. But uh, yeah, so we would record like three in a week and then take kind of a two week break for Christmas, spend time with family and get stuff done. Um, but no, I mean, we're still having fun. We're still going through it. And I think like, kind of like you guys said, that conversation was early on. But when yeah. you get to the point now where you're, you know, successful and you're having all these guests on and you enjoy what you're doing and people are starting to recognize the work you're doing, that's what motivates you to keep going too. So I will touch on that. I mean, you're spot on on that. Uh, you know, once sponsorships start rolling in, uh, you're getting really cool guests. You're looking forward to doing these interviews with people. I mean, you're getting to talk to some of the, the giants in the cigar industry, the whiskey industry, and just having great guests and conversations with people. And I mean, that's, isn't that what it's all about, man? Yeah. It, I mean, you get to meet all these people, whether it be via, you know, uh, virtually or in person. But again, that all comes full circle when we all get to our yearly meeting at PCA and, you know, everybody and yeah. it's like, yo, my man, I enjoyed our conversation earlier in the year. Like, you know, let's do some work together. Let's figure it out. Like what's new? Like, you know, all these people. And I think that's what makes it really fun. Yeah. As long as you keep like moving forward and you see the progress there's that motivation in there. And like you said too, like when you sit down and talk with these people, it's always a great time. I mean, I've said this before, every time you bring on a guest, it's that hour conversation afterwards where they don't want to leave and they're just hanging out. We've had guys that come on and they go, yeah, I got to leave in an hour. I got a dinner. And they stay an extra hour. Exactly. They're like, ah, they can wait. <laughs> That's like every interview for us. Yeah, exactly. uh, I got a hard hour. And then two hours later, it's like, yeah, man, I really should have been, yeah. I should have been gone. And I understand like, you know, setting that up like from the beginning it's like listen i gotta get out of here because you never know how it's gonna go and it's like you know you want to have that out but they realize you're cool guys and it's like oh okay you know i really don't have to go to dinner i'm just gonna stay but but that's also i feel like that's that's people not knowing you yet yeah uh once i mean i i'm sure you've had in studio uh interviews where you know you have a couple of drinks you're into your cigar. You're really you're starting to sink into that chair a little bit and get comfortable, and and that's when you could dig a little deeper. Mm-hmm. It, it's a lot more fun. Yeah. You get to know the person that, aside from the cigar stuff, right? Who is this guy really? Exactly. What makes this guy tick? Yeah, because yeah, people like to see that too. They like to get a little bit of insight on you know who is this guy that's you know sitting here talking about his cigars. You know, is he just another guy or is he actually? you know, someone cool, someone that has a story. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Plus I feel like the talks after the podcast really build like a relationship, you know, and like long-term relationships and like, you know, like you said before, you're really getting to know people better and kind of uh, realize, you know, we're gonna bring this person on again, you know, or we're gonna do something in the future together. Um, and it's always nice to hear someone's story of like their first cigar or how they started getting into the cigar industry themselves. And that's how I never get exhausted by doing this. You know, my mantra is I never give up. So we always have a consistency of publishing Pretty much every single Saturday morning, um, we film usually every Wednesday, so we have a routine going. Um, I think it's all about consistency and meeting new people and trying new cigars. And if they bring whiskey, even better, you know. <laughs> Hell yeah! Do you guys like to record at night or during the day? Uh, we usually record uh, around five thirty-six uh, when everyone gets off work. Yeah. So that's kind of like the last thing we do that day, and then we have a few days to edit and upload on Saturday. So uh, you know, this one will be a week from now. Uh, because we have one going up, but that gives us extra time to, you know, edit and make it all perfect. No, that's awesome, man. I, I do trust me. If there's one person in this conversation <laughs> that can appreciate <laughs> editing and uh, the amount of time and, and personal time that your co-hosts, not all of them, you know, endure, it's me. Uh, I, dude, I put a lot of 
extra personal time in that, you know, sometimes you feel like is appreciated. Sometimes you feel a little underappreciated. I get that, man. So like, keep grinding, dude. That's, that's like, it's a thankless job being the editor slash producer. Of the show. <laughs> it's thankless. Dude, like you're, seriously, you're preaching you to the guys, choir right now. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's a weird thing to to, to talk about, but it's definitely I, I completely understand it. Absolutely, man. Well, hey, listen. So uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. I appreciate you guys for coming on and talking to us sharing your story with the viewers. It's been fun. Let us know if you have any you know, other questions or if you want to talk more about building a brand and stuff with cigars in the future. I'd be down to talk to you about it. But, uh, you know, and I'm going to send you some cigars too. Thanks, Thanks dude. Appreciate we appreciate, appreciate you. It. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank, thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. And now, a final word from our sponsors. Crafted for the newcomer and the connoisseur, the Besa embodies excellence at every level. Each draw, a journey through rich, nuanced flavors and a smooth, unforgettable finish. Base a cigar, where tradition meets perfection.